Year 5. The Rule of Stark Raving Mad Journal of Raoul Stark Raving Mad Swear Engine Late Winter, 1054 So there I am last night, tending my tavern in Kinmel Bill, when in walks a slick-backed, noble-looking cocksucker and tells me I have the great honor of accepting the overseer position for one of our outposts. Honor my hairy dwarven ass. More than likely, someone found out about the gold strike I had my men working on in the Hills of Sorrow. This is their way of getting me out of the picture while they move in on it. But what can I do? The order is signed by the king himself, straight from Cadol fucking Loganfigig. Which means any attempt by yours truly to wriggle out of this great honor is going to end up with me getting a hammering from the captain of the royal guard. Nice situation, eh, chief? Well, pain or damage don't end the world, or despair or fucking beatings. The world ends when you're dead. Until then, you got more punishment in store. Stand it like a dwarf, and give some back. And that's what I always say. I take a look at the maps, and sure enough, this outpost is stuck out in the middle of nowhere, smack in the smooth points of pride. Boat murder, they call it. Name which doesn't bode well for much of fucking anything. This morning, I'm getting my supplies for the trip together, and what do I see but a bunch of hoopalhead cocksuckers loading up their weapons, and lo and behold, those horses are all pointed the same way as mine. I make a few quiet inquiries, and they're all headed to fucking boat murder, too. I set out with all haste, figuring it would be best if I got a little head start on these assholes, so maybe I could get the place in some sort of order before they get there. Now, I'm taking a quick breather, and I figured I should keep some sort of record of this trip, especially since I'm not so sure this plan isn't to get me fucking stabbed in the back some other way and end up thrown into a bottomless chasm or something. Document was happening, you see. Then at least if I get bumped off, there'll be some record of how it happened, and maybe my men back at the capital can get revenge for my poor damn soul. I probably won't be writing much more on this thing until I get to boat murdered. I need to move quick to stay ahead of the rabid pack of immigrants breathing down my neck. I swear, I can hear their mules already. Early Spring, 1055. Well, I made it to boat murdered and my initial impressions can be set forth in three words. What. The. Fuck. I'm going to include a few quick sketches of the place, artist impressions if you will, so excuse me if these are a little rough but I have to fucking try to get my mind around what I'm facing here. To begin with, all of our fucking workshops and trade goods are sitting outside in the fucking rain. One of the previous overseers must have been some sort of shallow-dwelling skygazer because having our production out here is just inhumane to the poor hoople as who have to stand out there. I almost went fucking crazy having to be out under the goddamn open sky for the whole trip out here instead of in a nice safe cavern. And some of these poor bastards have been working out in the open for four years now. Four years standing out in the rain, or even worse, under that horrifying yawning expanse of blue open sky. Fuck that. I'm moving everything inside. Oh, and you see all those E's I drew down there at the bottom? Elephants. The previous overseer must have had some sort of sick fucking fascination with them because we have elephants everywhere. Elephants in cages, elephants in the halls, elephants shitting in the dining room. Everywhere. I don't know what to do with them. I guess start butchering them and hope they make a good roast. You may also notice the lack of a road or a bridge to the west. Apparently, in the excess of fucking caution, the previous overseers blocked off the entire mountain with rivers, leaving no trade route for the human caravans. I'm going to fix that as well. I'm a businessman at heart and the caravans will come through before I'm done here. A few other drawings for you. Most of the poor bastards living here are in two square rooms, with a chest but not even a fucking cabinet. I'm not even going to try and fix that for the current population, but I think we can do better for the new cocksuckers on the way. Here we have a gigantic hull where the roof is held up by fucking matchsticks, and a stiff breeze is going to make the whole thing collapse. I don't know what kind of suicidal maniac put this together, and I'm not going to change it now, but you can bet I'm not sticking one fucking foot in there. I have a lot of work to do. Room full of levers. I don't know what any of them do, and I'm not going to try and figure it out. With the way this place is set up, any one of them could make the whole place collapse in like an accordion. Armok, help me. 
To start with, I'm going to move our food production facilities over here, near where the farm is. Kitchen, brewery, butcher, fish cleaner, whole nine yards. I'll get some food storage over here, too. Oh, did I mention, the current dining room seats eight, and we have seventy-four fucking dwarves. Oh, we're going to work on that, too. New dining room and great hall will be over here, across from the food production. New workshop area and good storage is going to be over here, south of the hall is suicide. Should make life a little easier for the metalsmiths, too. As if you couldn't tell from the excess of traps and walling the fortress off from the world, the previous overseer seemed to be a bit of a military mindset. Me? I'm a trade dwarf at heart. All the smelters have been going full force, pounding out steel and iron for weapons of fucking war. I instructed them to change their focus a bit. An elven caravan is here. Of course, with no road or bridge, I don't know if the pointy-eared cocksuckers will ever even make it to the depot. <laughs> Sorry, elves. Well, the immigrants are here. We've also got a broker and some pompous asshole claiming to be head of the Crafts Dwarves Guild. I think he's just looking for a free room without doing any work, but what can you do? Twenty-two more dwarves, counting the nobles. Oh, this should be fun. Gonna drill out some new bedrooms north of the suicide hall. The new broker immediately endears himself to me by mandating the production of toy forges. I'm tempted to tell him that I mandate he go fuck himself, but I think better of it and just put the work order for him. Late spring, 1055. The dwarves working here are the laziest bunch of hoopleheads I've ever seen. They aren't drinking, they're sleeping in off or stirring an item in the stockpile bus, which seems to be code for fucking around carrying things from place to place instead of doing real work. I have six fucking carpenters. I asked for this workshop to be built three months ago. You think anyone gets around to it? It's a ten minute job, but they're all too busy to do it. Busy doing what? I don't fucking know, since without the workshops up, they can't carpenter anything either. I have four miners. Two of them apparently sleep 20 hours a day. One is so injured he can't walk. And the last claims to be the retired ruler of this place, but he's the only guy who does any actual digging. Noticing that we have a military of three, not counting our fortress guards, I go ahead and draft a few more, giving me two squads so I can rotate who's on duty and who's slacking off in the barracks. The mayor just stormed into my office, demanded I stop the export of red spinel items. Considering I've never seen a fucking red spinel and have no idea what one is, I told him I was sure I could accommodate his request. Apparently, the Crafts Dwarf Union rules preclude me from directly asking for anything specific, including the fucking mini-forges that our beloved broker storms into my office every day and demands. The best I can do is tell them to make toys, and hope they happen to figure out that means many forges, and not boats or hammers or axes or puzzle boxes or all this other shit that I'm now buried under, and not a single fucking mini forge. And so the broker is pissed at me, and there isn't shit all I can do about it, since I wouldn't know how to make a fucking mini forge to save my life. I need a drink. Early summer, 1055. Picture of the new food preparation area, new dining, which I'm about to have engraved, and new elephant in a fucking cage storage room. We had three trappers, a profession that was only going to get them killed, and Armak knows the last thing we need is more fucking trapped animals anyway. I told them to make clothes instead, since half the dwarves here are walking around in tatters and they're pissed about it. The manager demanded a clear glass window in his room. To fucking look at what, I asked him. Your room doesn't have a hole leading to the outside. Your room doesn't have a view of anything. The best I can do is put in a window that is two feet away from a stone wall. He doesn't give a shit. He wants a window. Fine. I hope the cocksucker falls through it while he's drunk. We have some really messed up room that serves as bedroom, dining room, office, and everything for all the nobles at once. I started carving out some real noble rooms deeper into the mountain for the next batch of nobles to show up. Human caravan is here, but unfortunately I couldn't get the road built in time, so no wagons. I'll have it through before the year's up, though. The humans bring me a load of meat and cloth. I trade them an elephant in a cage for everything they own. Have fun with that one, assholes. I finished making the broker's mini-forges. He immediately issued a mandate that no mini-forges could be exported. I guess the cocksucker really likes his fucking mini-forges. 
One of my farmers took over the Kravsdor shop. He's babbling about gods and artifacts and sketching pictures of quarries and ore and trees and shells and everything under the fucking sun. I'm sketching pictures of the fortress guards lopping his head off in about two weeks. The road is through. Welcome to Greater Society, Boat Murdered. Oh, for the love of... Sure, why not? More migrants. Come on in, cocksuckers. The more, the merrier. I finally figured out something useful to do with all the trapped animals. The Barnum and Bailey Happy Time Zoo. Picture below. Still under construction. Friends, if you like to look at elephants or mandrels or more fucking elephants and mandrels, is this ever the place for you? Geshud Melbelid, farmer, has gone stark raving mad. Kind of ironic considering my nickname and all. At least I have that craft shop back. A frogman jumped out of the well and surprised Sibrick, one of the military dwarves. He killed the froggy pretty easily, but then he somehow got stuck in the well. So now little Timmy there is dying of thirst because he can't drink from the well that his fat ass is stuck in. His friends don't seem to have any trouble drinking around him. I guess they brought straws or something. Autumn, 1055. I told our engravers to engrave the walls and floor of the new dining room. They proceed to decorate the room with some of the most horrifying shit I've ever seen. I mean, fuck. Dwarfs are trying to eat in there. Ogez Stumam, the hole of broiling. Engraved on the wall is a superiorly designed image of an elephant by Tourette Doge Regunib. The elephant is in a fetal position. Honestly. Kik Sterus, the speck of driving. Engraved on the wall is a finely designed image of a dwarf by Tourette Doge Regunib. The dwarf is dead. We've got a little, um, elephant issue happening down south. Starting to understand why the previous owner had a million of them in cages. One or two got pissed and they killed someone and now the dwarves are trying to get the items from the guys that died. And the elephants are just running wild over everyone. A couple of the elephants got caught in the remaining cage traps, but one or two got through. The brave military men of boat murdered assembled by the front gate, and they braced themselves for a rush at the mighty elephants. And it was about then when the fucking dwarven caravan arrived. I ordered the military to hold fast, let the caravan guardsmen get themselves slaughtered by the elephants before we do, which was also right around where the goblin thief jumped out and got clobbered by a stonefall trap. So the merchants arrived to see blood and vomit everywhere, us hauling corpses and mass to the graveyard, a couple rampaging elephants, well, welcome to fucking boat murder! Hope you like miasma! This elephant has killed so many guys, he has a fucking full-on last name and title now. One of the dogs finally knocked him unconscious, which is about when 16 more elephants have showed up to support their buddies. The funny thing is, the elephants keep trying to leave. Like, they'll go down to the passageway back towards the outside, and then some fucking dwarf wanders in to get the dead guy's pants or whatever. And it pisses the elephants right the fuck off, and they come charging back up the passage again. Guess I'd better put in a work order for some more fucking coffins. Despite me telling the dwarves to stay inside and stop going out there, they continue to try and recover corpses. It's time for harsher measures. I told everyone to stop fucking gathering everything. But it doesn't matter what I tell these morons. They're bound and determined to march to their deaths. Harsher fucking measures are necessary. I install two front doors and lock them. No one gets in or out. Boat murder is closed until further notice. This basically stops the elephant problem for now as a temporary measure. I'm hoping they get bored when they figure out no more fucking toys are coming to play and wander off. We lost about 20 dwarves to this debacle. Of course, just to add insult to fucking injury, about 17 snake men jump out the river. We don't really lose any there, except a couple of dogs and cats, though. Yeah, you elephant assholes, choke on that miasma! Meanwhile, one of my clothes makers made about the awesomest shirt ever. Stumamanam, broiled edges. This is a pigtail tunic. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with pigtail and cave lobster shell and encircled with bands of pigtail. It is made from pigtail cloth. This object is adorned with hanging rings of turquoise and platinum, and menaces with spikes of steel, sandstone, and tin. On the item is an image of dwarves and dwarves in pigtail. The dwarves are speaking with the dwarves. 
On the item is an image of dwarves and dwarves in rock crystal. The dwarves are speaking with the dwarves. Winner, 1055. I've started Project Fuck the World. Top secret attempt to funnel magma to the outside. I'll kill those elephants. I'll kill all those fucking elephants. I don't know if I'll have time to finish it, though. I've also started Project Get Me the Fuck Out of Boat Murdered, and I'm hoping to finish that one by the end of the year. Remember how I told you that I ran into some miner claiming to be the former ruler of this place? Well, that's just how the sneaky bastard got out of here. I finally figured it out. And I'm taking that same route, soon as I can. See, I just convinced some poor cocksucker to say he's me. Enough platinum and he'll go for it. Then I slip right the fuck out of town, easy as pie. I already found someone who looks enough like me for it to work. I just have to wait for the right moment to escape this elephant-ridden hellhole. The elephants don't seem to be leaving. They love their stench and miasma-filled tunnel. So, still, no one can go outside. All the wood is outside, which means my carpenters don't have a lot to do right now. But I know if I crack the front door for them to get the wood, they go fucking running down to the elephant tunnel to say hello to their gigantic, angry, tusked friends. On the bright side, we have plenty of beds, since most of their previous fucking occupants are now dead. So we don't need the carpenters for much right now. And you know, sometimes you think it really can't get much worse. And then it does. The goblins are upon us. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Hello, boys! <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm supposed to be scared of a little fucking goblin siege? I'm already trapped in the fortress by four legendary elephants. Shit, I'm just hoping you assholes manage to kill the elephants for me. I'll give you a fucking medal. The worst thing you could do to me would be to open the door causing the lemming rush of death down the elephant tunnel again. Come on, bring it on! Apparently, the elephants don't mind the goblins. They're best friends! Oh, you're here to beat up the dwarves? Well, by all means, go through, be our guest. We'll just be out here chewing on these dwarf bones if you need us. <sighs> the goblins are totally confused by all this and have decided to go stand around by the channel. Hey, the sign on the door says closed. Shit, Bob, I thought you said it was open till 9 on Saturdays. What do we do? Maybe we should ask the elephants. They seem to have killed a lot of them. Ha <laughs> ha! The goblins just lazily took a few pot shots at a stray cat still wandering around out front. Then they just stayed out in the elephant tunnel. I think they're starting their own little town in there. Elephants and goblins living together in peace and harmony, joined only by their burning hatred for dwarves. Operation Fuck the World has failed. I struck water with my aqueduct, and the channel to the outside is now filled with water. Whoever comes after me may try to continue the project. They'll just have to route to a different tunnel. Or they may try to build up the military enough to where they can do a frontal assault on the elephant goblin army. Me? I'm past fucking caring. You see, spring has sprung, and I'm taking my fucking chance to get out of the town. That poor sucker will take my name, and by the time they figure out he's not me and he's just some hooplehead who can't run a wagon, much less a fortress, I'll be long gone. New name, new town, new fortune. Nothing's worth staying here. I'm leaving this journal in the desk of the overseer's office. To whoever finds this journal, good fucking luck to you. Star Craving Mad posted. Although I wouldn't be surprised if the next person decided to revert to Locus's save instead. It wasn't even opening up the road and the bridge that did it, because the elephants and goblins still came in through the trap channel. The problem was just that I forgot to make new cages to reset the traps into the lower tunnel. So only one or two of them were live, and when, like, twelve elephants came crashing through, there wasn't much I could do. Then they got into that loop of trying to get to the dead dwarf's stuff and dying themselves, and even sending in the military just caused more losses. It was a pretty ugly round, although I think I did accomplish some good stuff, particularly moving the production and storage facilities inside and getting a couple new nobles installed. The place isn't a total loss, just so long as you, you know, don't open the front door. But you may be able to muster up enough of an army to overcome it, or do a lava flood of the exterior, or just pray a human caravan with some badass swordsman comes through. 
Aside from the whole goblin and elephant siege, the fortress is in pretty good shape. There's plenty of food, sleeping space, and production for survival. It's just a matter of clearing the exterior. Right now, you're going to see a lot of error message spam, since some dwarves are trying to do things that require going outside, and there's no path to it. Good luck no matter what you decide to do with it.